it's been three decades since the film Sarafina was produced in Soweto. The film, which was directed by Daryl Rudd, has successfully captured what took place during the Soweto 1917 student uprising. It featured some of the top talents at home and abroad. Joining us to talk and take us down memory lane is the director of Sarafina, Daryl Rudd. Daryl, so, thank you so much for joining us. And congratulations on this milestone of having directed a film 30 years ago that is still so much a part of our society, a film that has truly stood the test of time. Time. and it's been 30 years because you were 30 years old back then when you directed this film. Um, did you then, as a 30-year-old, believe that this film would become um, the big thing that it is today that we've all known to be, Sarafina to be? Well, you know, I'm glad to be alive to, to um, tell you the story. I mean, I cannot believe 30 years have passed. I still feel 30. I've got the same enthusiasm and energy that I had then. But look, this already goes back to Mbongeni and Gamma. He wrote an extraordinary musical, and it broke through on so many levels. Well, it broke into the international arena, and it told a very powerful, important story. So when I first went to see the musical with Anant in, like, kind of New York, I was kind of worried about turning it into a feature because it's such a broad thing and it's such a specific musical. But we were very lucky to have had a really great screenwriter, um, like kind of adapted for us. He had been nominated for a couple of Oscars, whatever. So he really put this beautiful thread onto the story. And um, I mean, that certainly helped us a lot. And then Nant, you know, said, come, let's get Whoopi Goldberg. I said, you'll never get Whoopi Goldberg. We're South Africans. You're not going to be interested. And sure enough, we got Whoopi Goldberg. So Whoopi with um, Laleti and Mbongeni and myself and an amazing choreogra choreographer called Michael uh, Peters, who did all of Michael Jackson shows, we came up with this beautiful gift, you know what I mean? Every day, it was a privilege to stand on that set and watch these kids tell their story because it's such a powerful, important story to them. And I guess their power, you know, I said to them, guys, I'm just your... I want you to tell me your stories. I'm going to put the camera here and I'm going to do this and whatever, but it's your story. Tell it to me. And their power came into the film, and that's why it has this resonance. And surely, I mean, the industry has, has since evolved since the making of Sarafina. But what would you say were some of the biggest challenges that you faced as filmmakers then? I can imagine that censorship must have been a very big issue back then. Well, it was, you know, because my first couple of films of the Nant, they were like banned, and we had to show them outside of the country, then cut them, and then fight the censor board, and blah, blah, blah. Um, but by the time Serafini was coming around, things were starting to change. However, it was still difficult to convince the world, as it is still to this day, although it's changing a little bit now, that, you know, South African stories are part of the international story and then should be revered. Yes, it was working with plays. It was a, there were a lot of playwrights, including Mbongeni and Gamma, who were able to tell these very important important stories that challenge the, the horror of apartheid. But getting money to do a film is a whole other story. So we always used to work with low budgets. We still do, but it is getting better for the filmmakers out there. So I'm pleased about that, you know. Speaking of low budgets, I mean, you've been quoted saying that the film and TV industry in South Africa is under great strain because of those low budgets and that in South Africa, filmmakers work under extreme duress and that the audiences are especially harsh on South African films. Why do you find this to be the case? Well, it's hard not to be. I think you find this in any country, uh, you know, not just peculiar to South Africa. If you're in England, you're making an English film, it's going to get ju judged harshly by English people. And the sad thing as a filmmaker is that there are no excuses. Your film is showing on a screen. You can't stand up in front of every screening and say, oh, but I only had so much money. You can't do that. You've got to just put your heart and soul into it and hope it resonates, you know. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of what I do, and I think that's what a lot of successful South African filmmakers do. They, despite the budget, they keep going, and they manage to tell, an, you know, a story that resonates. So it's tough being a filmmaker in South Africa. It's not easy. Look, it's tough being, you know, digging a ditch, definitely. I mean, you know, being a filmmaker is a privilege, but... That's a privilege you have to really work for. I mean, it's, it's not for the faint-hearted. Most certainly. Now, Sarafina told a story of young people in South Africa struggling against apartheid. If you were to direct a film in 2022 that focused on a struggle that young people are faced with today, what would be its focus? Well, you know, it's a very interesting question you ask, and I think we're all asking this question. Like, where, where do we stand now, almost 30 years later in our new democracy? Um, 
and the interesting thing is, this has provoked me into thinking of a new Serafina type story. Not Serafina per se, because that's Mbongeni and Gamer's genius creation. But I'm very keen to tell um, a story from a young person's perspective about what's happening in South Africa now. You know, I've just had the privilege of interviewing L.B. Sachs, um, this incredible man who fought the liberation struggle big time. And his generosity of spirit at the end of this interview was saying, it's up to the young kids again. Just like they fought back in 76 and we all did to fight the fight, there's another fight coming and we need to fight this fight if these kids want to have a beautiful life, you know, and their children after them. Because right now, I'm not a politician, and, and I dare not, you know, um, add my two cents worth. But, you know, you know you, I'm an observer because I make movies. And we are, a, we are at a crossroads, and I believe, once again, it's the kids who hold the, um, the key in their hand. I really believe that. No, they most certainly do. Um, in, in parting with you, what would you then have to say to the young people of South Africa? Um, we are rounding off Youth Month, but, you know, it's always a time where we have to constantly remind the young people that that key is certainly in their hands. Well, you know, there's that, yeah, freedom is coming tomorrow, man, and you just got to, you got to believe, you know, like all those kids in Sarafina said, I'll never forget Samizi questioning me about everything I was doing and what's this about me, but you should be saying this, blah, 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 blah. We need to question everything. We can't just sit here and accept the status quo for what it is because what's happening, the margin between the rich and the poor is just getting wider and wider and wider. And, you know, I, dare I say this, if I was a president or you, the, I can, you can see what to do. I know that's easier said than done, but is it? Is it? Is it? You know, I mean, so I hope the kids just, you know, bring the power. Fight the power. Thank you so much, Daryl Rich. You still seem as young and free-spirited as you were 30 years ago, and we do hope that we will have another film very much like Sarafina coming out very soon um, with that directing touch of yours. Thank you so much for your time and having this conversation with us.